Welcome back to Proverbs 31 Life. Um, today, we are talking about saying yes in 2023. So what does that look like? Um, I personally enjoy the excitement, the expectancy of a new year. It's like a fresh start. There's changes coming. You're setting goals. You're just looking forward to, you know, the what ifs, the what could be. Um, and now I can finally start recovering financially from Christmas and a December birthday wow. and a January birthday. Um, we have a lot going on here at the end of the year. So it's nice that, you know, we're getting settled back in our routine and, you know, it's just new. It's a new year. If this year was challenging for you, then January 1st probably feels like a breath of fresh air. There's hope. There's change. It's almost like you can just wash off this last year, the difficulty, the struggle, and it's just, okay, now this is a new starting point. It's like a clean slate, and that's refreshing for you. Um, if it was, you know, a good year, then you're looking forward to more good things. If there were mistakes made this year, and we all did, then I hope the next year is going to be different for you. I hope you're looking forward to the new year and seeing, okay, these are the mistakes we made. These are the things that we went through. We're not going to do that again. Um, so there's just a lot that comes with this. So every day, even now, before the new year comes, is a gift from the Lord. So I'm going to give you some things today that I want you to remember for the remaining couple days of this year and all of 2022 or 2023. So this is some encouragement. This is some hope, but it's also a challenge, okay, of things that I want you to remember and things that I want you to take with you. So first of all, like I said, I want you to remember and live like every day is a gift from the Lord that we are not entitled to have. Okay, don't take this for granted. James talks about, you know, our life is but a vapor, and, you know, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, we have to trust the Lord. So I want you to live that way. Whether you use each day to share something he's done from you, a promise um, from his word, you use his word to encourage someone, you use your personal experiences to encourage someone and point them to the Lord, or you are more directly giving the gospel. Um, whatever it is, it's all done to point others to Jesus, and this should be a priority of every Christian. We are a light, okay? We are the salt and light of the earth. Hey, leave that alone. Um so live that way. Don't wait till January 1st to say, okay, I'm going to be a better soul winner. Start today. Don't wait. Start today. Someone's eternity depends on this. Um, I want to remind you that God has never left you nor forsaken you. He didn't do it in 2022. He's not going to do it in 2023. Trust him. Keep walking with him. Um, the church. We're going to talk about church. And I know this is um, sensitive for some of you. But we're going to look at this, how God looks at the church and how the Bible looks at church. Church is not um, a legalistic, financial, um, political scheme. Do those exist? Yes, it does. It existed in Jesus' time. He came over, flipped some tables and said, uh, my house is to be a house of prayer. You guys have made it a den of thieves. Um, paraphrasing, of course. And it's no different today. Pastors are sinful men, deacons are sinful men, but you're a sinful sinner, church member, okay? Um, so, yes, those places exist, but they're not all the same. Don't base your, you know, experience of church on one good church or one bad church, one bad church member, one bad pastor. Um, most of us have been through some sort of church hurt or disappointment, um, church drama, whatever you want to call it. Um but you have to pick up and move on because this is for the Lord. God commands us in Hebrews to be in church. Um, yes, where two or more gathered in my name, there I am in the midst is something that he promises us. But that's not the same as church. Yes, you can worship anywhere. Not the same as church, okay? We are to bring our tithes into the storehouse, the church, the first day of the week. Where is your tithe going? Are you tithing? Um, how are you supporting missionaries? You know, there's a lot of things that are to be done through the local church. This is where your church family is to be. Um, so, you know, there's, when a church operates as God intends, it will have God's hand of blessing on it. And 
that's where we have been blessed enough to be. Um, our home church is a church family. And there are some situations that I've gone through, just some personal trials, struggles, that um, I don't know what would have happened um, without my church family. I don't know how I would have handled it. And I mean, I have the Lord, of course, but he's given us each other for a reason, okay? Um, so take the time, make the effort, take the step. The first step is the hardest. Satan doesn't want you in church. And um, find the church search. It takes time, it takes weeks, it takes lots of visiting and lots of questions, and it's exhausting. We've done it, um, but it's worth it. And you have to trust the Lord. And you're going to learn through that process too. And that's just as important, okay? Um, your kids need to be raised in church. So this isn't just for you. This is for them as well. Um, so when you find that place where God wants you to be, love those people. Okay, God's given them to you and it's a blessing. Um, set aside time every day to spend time with the Lord. This needs to be done through Bible reading, Bible study, prayer, Um you know, this time is essential to your spiritual life. This is where you get things right. You know, as moms, especially as wives, we pour out, we pour into other people, we help, we teach, we encourage. Um, we need that time with the Lord that keeps us right. You know, your kids are going to frustrate you. Your husband's going to frustrate you. Your job is going to frustrate you. But we have to keep things with a Christ-centered mindset. And we do that by spending time in God's Word. Okay, you're not just going to happen to accidentally become a godly woman. If you're not spending time with God, it's not going to happen. Um, being right with the Lord is the first step to being the parent, the spouse, the friend, employee, etc. that God has called you to be. Um, take time to invite a friend, a sibling, a parent to a coffee date, to lunch, dinner, whatever it is. Be intentional with your time this year, starting today, this year, with spending time with those that you love, strengthening those relationships. Next, I want to encourage you and challenge you to go above and beyond for your spouse if you're married. Maybe there's a task that you don't love to do, but they appreciate it. They enjoy it. Um, for me, it's making breakfast. I do not enjoy making breakfast. Um, but my husband really enjoys being woken up to breakfast. Um, and it helps him to not eat out and spend more money. So that's one of the things that I've been doing the last couple of weeks is getting up before everyone else, having my devotions, making breakfast for everyone. Um, not quite to the place of enjoyment yet, but we're getting there. Um, and it's just a good discipline for me to have to get my devotions done. But whatever it is, maybe it's ironing his clothes, whatever it is, do it with joy as unto the Lord in 2023. Um, I want to remind you that you cannot love the Lord, your family, or your church family too much. You just can't. Um, so let 2023 be the year that you love hard. Let this be the year. Please stop. Take it off. Let this be the year that you reach out to that new person at church, at work. Um, maybe someone in your family got married. You've got a new in-law. Reach out to them. Make them feel loved. Make them feel comfortable. Don't treat them like an outcast or an outsider. Um, the relationships you have, pour into them. Your phone, your social media, your work. It's not more important than people, than the people God has given you right here. Um, step out of your comfort zone and walk by faith. Let this be the year that God, um, your, your walk with God grows deeper and your faith gets stronger. Take God at his word this year and experience him like never before. Wouldn't that be great if we just had revival because we just said yes, yes to God, yes to living in obedience to his word. Spend more time reading the Bible, reading other godly books, um, studying his word, meditating on it, memorizing it than you did in 2022. Let this be the year that the word of God dwells in you richly. Okay. That's what, um, the Bible says that he wants for us that the word of God may dwell in us richly. Let 2023 be the year of saying yes to God, even when it's hard. Okay. God is going to call you out of your comfort zone. That's where we grow. That's where we do things for him. Say yes, just trust him with the results. Okay. Um, say yes, starting today in 2023 to saying yes to walking in faith and obedience. Yes to loving people. Yes to being a godly Christian, not a carnal Christian, a godly Christian. Yes to be, um, to being used by God to impact the lives of others for his good and his glory. So stay in the word, stay close to the shepherd, let him 
lead you in paths of righteousness. Say yes to God's leading in 2023.